Shalom everyone, I'm Ariella. I'm so glad to see everybody here tonight. And as usual, we have a 15 second at least lag time. And if you would be kind enough to let me know if you can see and hear me, I would really appreciate it. And happy Halloween to all of you too, by the way. Shalom, Kimberly. Can you hear me? Yep, see and hear me. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. So, again, welcome to all of you. And I'm so happy to see so many friendly faces that I know who you are. Um, let's start off with answering the question of why am I talking about circumcision when A, I'm a, not a guy and why at this particular time. And that is because this week's Parsha is uh, Lech Lecha, and that is where the covenant between God and Abraham with respect to circumcision appears in the Tanakh in Genesis 17, to be more precise. So we'll be looking at that tonight, but that's the reason. And I love the promo that uh, Rabbi Patrick sent out. Let's talk about circumcision this Shabbat, which I thought was pretty funny. So I'm glad to see some guys here. Troy, I know you have to leave early. Lanny, you're going to be helping me out here tonight uh, with your perspective, as you always do. Um, it is Halloween. I went ahead and put the uh, candy outside on the bench with the light on. Uh, Casey, my dog, will probably be yapping a little bit. I apologize for that. And if we're lucky, Nobody will ring the doorbell because that would be very loud and very disturbing. So, um, if you haven't signed in, would you do me a favor and go ahead and sign in? If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the one shul strat uh, chat room, and beside that, you'll see some horizontal lines under which says menu. And if you signed in as a guest with a number and you would prefer to use a name or something by which I can call you besides your number, Go ahead and just click on that and change who you are. Someone was going to have a Halloween Shabbat dinner. Hmm. I have had a couple of guys ask me about circumcision. Dog yapping at my home as well. I'm glad to hear that. <clears throat> and Troy, a little later, I'm going to um, ask you to uh, hopefully catch you before you leave and talk about uh, what kinds of things you've been asked about circumcision. That would be great. So I'm going to expect you to participate if you're here with us. I do know that you have to go and read Torah tonight um, on Skype. So I'd like to go ahead and start with, uh, this is from Abraham Heschel, by the way, and I absolutely love it. Re read it with me if you don't mind. Refreshed and renewed, attired in festive garments, with candles nodding dreamily to unutterable expectation, to intuitions of eternity. Some of us are overcome with a feeling as if almost all they would say would be like a veil. There is not enough grandeur in our souls to be able to unravel in words the knot of time and eternity. One should like to sing for all men, for all generations. There is a song in the wind and joy in the trees. The Sabbath arrives in the world, scattering a song in the silence of the night. Eternity utters a day. Where are the words that could compete with such might? Isn't that great? I'm going to look over here for a moment at see if anybody lit my Shabbat candles tonight, each in its own jack <laughs> Is Are those the pictures that you sent me? I didn't check my email before I come in. Usually I get a little panicky before um, I'm in here with the service, and I don't check my emails. So whatever you sent me, do I have your permission to show them uh, next week? Okay, I can't wait. And I wish I knew enough to pull that up and stick it in my PowerPoint, but I don't. I am technologically impaired in that regard. Um, 
I'm feeling really full of love, and God always is too. So I'd like to uh, start off with Ahavad Alam, which means everlasting love, and this addresses God's eternal love for us. Um, I don't know whether I should go ahead and read it in English or read it in Hebrew. I'm going to do the psalm in Hebrew, so let's do this one in English. With an eternal love, the house of Israel, your people you have loved, Torah and commandments, laws and precepts you have taught us. Therefore, Hashem our Elohim, when we lie down and when we rise, we will discuss your laws, and we will rejoice in the words of your Torah and your commandments forever and ever. For they are our life and the length of our days, and we will reflect on them day and night. Your love do not remove from us forever. Blessed are you, Hashem, who loves his people Israel. Let's go ahead and start the service tonight. And I did, in fact, because it's quite dark here at the time, have already uh, lit my candles, but we're going to uh, go through these rituals at any rate. And I always start off with at home, not kidding with this saying from Rabbi Nachman of Bratislav, and this is the way he started off his Shabbats. May it be God's will that I be privileged to receive this holy Shabbat with happiness and joy, with song and excitement. Protect me so that no sadness or depression, no anguish or worry will mar my Shabbat. May I be happy with all my soul, with all my heart, and with all my strength. Let this happiness without limit encompass the world, your people Israel, me, my loved ones, and the members of my family. Lighting candles is a rabbinic institution, and theoretically, it's, this is what formally ushers in the Sabbath. We're supposed to have a minimum of two candles, and that's derived from the fourth of the Ten Commandments, which appears in two places in the Torah, to remember in Exodus and to observe in Deuteronomy. These lights are only flickering flames, yet flames illumine our uncertain steps. Flames purify and renew, soften and refine. They brighten and make warm. Flames remind us of Sabbath's long past and of their beauty that delighted our hearts. May they inspire us to work for the great Sabbath of peace. And now the candle blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kidishanu b'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu lehadlik neher, של שבת. So here we come to the place that I love, which is pretending for a moment that we have lit our candles, and actually we have. We've gone to shul, and we're home now, and we're just about ready to start eating. And Rabbi Yossi ben Yehuda in the Talmud says that when we, tur when we return from shul, we're accompanied by two angels one good and one bad. Uh, Shalom Aleichem is a song from the 17th century that we actually at our home uh, sing around our Shabbat table and it is purportedly based on this uh, information from the Talmud. So let's listen to it. This is one of my favorite versions. Yasharit Malachi Elion Mi Melech Malachi Yamlachim Akatosh Baruchu Boachem Lashalom Malachi Yasharit Hey 
This is our beloved Lanny, and before I say more wonderful things about Lanny, who's going to take us through Kaddish, I would like to say hello to Adele and Vicki, who just joined us, and Benjamin, and Mike, I don't know if you were here before, and David. Shalom to all of you, and thank you so much for coming. Shalom, and Shabbat Shalom, and happy Halloween. Now, this is Lanny, our beloved Lanny and who is going to, uh, as I said, do Kaddush for us. A traditional uh, Shabbat Kaddush includes reading a section of the creation story from Genesis that describes how God rested on the seventh day, a blessing over the wine, um, a blessing over Shabbat itself, and you know we're not supposed to eat it or drink anything before Kaddush, and that starts at sundown. So, Lanny, thank you for coming and thank you for doing this for us. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Borei pori hagafen Amen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Asher kiddushonu b'mitzvah tov v'ratzavanu V'shabbat kodsho v'ahava uv'ratzon hinchilanu Zikaron lima ase voreshit. Ki hu yom tehila la mikrai kodesh. Zeher lesiat mitzrayim. Ki vanu vachata. Viotanu ki dashta. Mikohomim. Vishabat koshecha. Behava uvraton in Khaltanu Baruchato Adonai Mekadesh Hashabat Amen. Shabbat Shalom, my friends. I love the ending, Lanny. Thank you so much for that. Another way in which we sanctify Shabbat is the rabbinic ordinance, again, from temple times of the ritual hand washing. And this occurs after Kaddish and before the blessing of the bread. Originally, it was decreed only for the priests before they ate their sacred food. Eventually, it was extended to all Jews. And this is the one ritual that many homes do not do. We do do it in my house. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kidishanu b'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu al nitilat yadayim. And now comes the blessing of the bread. And this is our final ritual before we start our Shabbat meal. And even though the picture doesn't show it, we know that the uh, bread is supposed to be, the bread and the knife are both supposed to be completely covered, uh, both above and below. And the uncut loaves are then uncovered, raised, and we say the blessing. Baruch
Now, this is the part where I get to say that I'm so happy that you're here, and this is my way of expressing that happiness that we're together tonight. This is Hina Matov. Now, as you know, during a Kabbalah Shabbat service, usually multiple psalms are read. For us, usually we do just one or two, and tonight we're going to do one in that Psalm 97. And again, this talks about uh, what it would be like if all of us got together and we transformed our ego's nature and came together in love and harmony in a world that would be filled with light and joy. You can read along with me or read it in Hebrew, whichever you prefer. Adonai Malach Tegel Haaretz Yishmahu Yim Rabim Anan Varafel Sebivav Sedeku Mishpat Michon Kiso Esh Lefanav Telech Utelahet Saviv Zarav Heiru Brakav Tevel Ratav Etechel Haaretz Harim Kadonag Namasu Milifne Adonai Milifne Adon Kol Haaretz Hagidu Hashemayim Siko, Verahucho Haamim Kvodo, Yevoshu Kolo De Fesel, Hamid Halalim Baalalim, Hishtahavu Lo Kol Elohim, Shama Avatis Mak Sion, Batagelna Benot Yehuda, Lamaan Mishpatecha Adonai, Kita Adonai Elion A Kol Haaretz, Meod Na Leta A Kol Elohim. Ohave Adonai Sinura, Shomer Nafshot Hasidav, Miyad Hashayim Yatsalem, Ozaru Al Tsarik, Ulishre Lev Simcha, Simhut Sarikim Ba Adonai, Behudu Le Zecher Kodsho. Now, if we recall that um, Kabbalah Shabbat means reception of the Sabbath, and the story is told about in the Talmud about Rabbi Hanina and Yanai who went out into their yards dressed in their Shabbat finery. One said, come and let us go forth and meet the Queen of Shabbat. And the other one said, come, O bride, come, O bride. So we're talking about the Queen and the Bride. And this is another one of my favorite readings. I hope you're not getting sick of hearing it if you're with me a lot. Uh, the sun has already disappeared beyond the treetops. Come let us go and welcome the Sabbath Queen. She is already descending among us, holy and blessed, and with her are angels, a host of peace and rest. Come, O Queen, come, O Queen, peace be unto you, O angels of peace. Sit among us, O pure Shabbat Queen, and enlighten us with your splendor. Tonight and tomorrow, then you may pass. And we, for our part, will honor you by wearing beautiful clothing, by singing Zemro, by praying, and by eating three meals. And with complete rest, and with pleasant rest, bless me with peace, O angels of peace.
Now, the stories that I just told you served as a basis for the Lajado de Hem. And what you see here, the first line that's in italics is the refrain, the English underneath. And the refrain, you're going to recognize it throughout. It's repeated multiple times. This is one of my favorite versions. As you know, there are many, many versions. And we're going to do the first and the last verse. There's also many verses, as you probably know. So let's listen to this part. The Shema is typically considered our most important prayer, and we're obligated to say it twice daily, in the morning and at night. Every time I read this, and I have to get the vision out of my mind before I can really concentrate, I do, I say this every time I uh, do the Shema, and I know when I do the service and we do the Shema, that I think of Rabbi Akiva who was reciting the Shema while his skin was being scraped off with a large iron comb. He was being punished by the Romans for teaching Torah. And this is the first and main paragraph of the Shema. I'd like it, if you don't mind, that we'll say it together. And then we're going to listen to the first part of it sung in Hebrew. You shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall speak of them when you are sitting at home, and when you go on a journey, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be jewels between your eyes. You shall inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates.
Mihochmoka is based on the Song of the Sea poem from Exodus 15, and it answers the question, Who is like you, Lord? The answer, of course, is that there is none like him. Adele, this is for you. The Hatsi Kaddish, or Half Kaddish, is sometimes called the Reader's Kaddish uh, because it's used as a separator between parts of a service. It's a hymn of praise about the greatness of God, and we're going to move to the interactive part of our evening, and I thought this would be a good place for us to listen to the Hatsi Kaddish. For those of you who have uh, not been here with us before or don't know what I was talking about when I said, Adele, this is for you, when I was talking about Michmoka, it's because um, we're talking, we're, that is supposed to be about there's one God and one God only. And the version that I had picked out, because I love the music, also had images of other gods of other religions, including Buddha. And that did not sit well with Adele and for two or three weeks she uh, was making her case in the room and ultimately she sent me an email and made so many good points presented her case beautifully that I really felt compelled to look around and see if I could find something that addressed her concerns and I hope that Adele this one is acceptable to you I completely agree with you and the points that you made about the other one and thank you very much for calling that to uh, our attention. 
So now we will move on to the interactive part of the evening. We're going to play um, Debbie Friedman's version of the uh, healing prayer. And this is absolutely beautiful. I'm probably just going to play it once for you, but anybody that you know that is in need of physical or spiritual healing or compassion, restoration, strength, um, please say the name and or type it. Uh, geez, I wish I could hear you. Type in the name and I will go ahead. I've turned the sound down so that you'll be able to, uh, I will be able to read the names over it. And I'd like to go ahead and start with um, Kip, who needs compassion and strength right now, and Terry, who's physically ill and still fighting her cancer. And although she's not here tonight, I would like to uh, mention Gus, just in case she's having a bad week. I think of her often. Root, who needs a biopsy. from the loss of a daughter from brain cancer. All those who should stop smoking but having troubles getting there. And Lanny May your dad is. May God swiftly bring a complete renewal of body and spirit to all who are in need and let us say amen. Amen. Susan, who's battling Parkinson's disease. Love Debbie's work, and yes, so do I. Dad is doing okay, thanks. Thanks, Lanny, for letting us know. Better health for me, I have lupus. T tough disease, Kimberly. Diabetics. Vicki is, uh, might as well be a family member. She does have diabetes, and she has one of those neat little pump things so that she can manage it. It's uh, pretty significant. Uh, disease in her particular case. She was my dog nanny for many years and then she abandoned me and went to Tennessee. Thank you, Lanny, for praying for Kimberly as I'm sure we all are. I'm so glad you're all here tonight. Now as you look back over the past week, doesn't have me. Wow, what an attitude. Thank you, I have lupus, but it doesn't have me for those of you who may not be um, reading what's in the chat room. It's great. As we look back over the uh, past week here, and you think about any blessings, anything that you're grateful for, anything that's made you happy, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, Start with, as you know, because I've been telling you for weeks that uh, about my dog losing one of his eyes, and I'm so afraid that his vision is going to diminish in the other. That I live in a house that's raised up, and he has to go downstairs on his ramp, which I'm afraid he may not be able to do. So I bought a new house, and I just got my pool to close on it so that he'll be flat on the ground. So that's what I'm happy about. I got that food to close. Anybody 
consider that they had any blessings this week. Anything you raised before. I guess there's so many I can't listen to. My mom got her fifth car post lip. And now can't catch up all the long list of things to do. Mm. The non music makes me sneaky happy. Yeah, I noticed you had a real talk. You know, that's something, Lenny, that you and I should really talk about and bring Troy in on talking about that, about uh, non-oc music. One month left until you get married. Congratulations. Son is getting married next Saturday. That's from Vicky, and yes, he certainly is. What an exciting time for all of you. That's great. And how about the converse? Was there anything this week that made you sad, that worried you, bothered you? You know, if you've been here before, that um, those of us who come to One Shul are quite empathic. So I know that I'm very comfortable sharing. I just don't happen to have anything this week that made me sad or worried me. But anything that you have, feel free to type it in. Anything that you'd like to share with us. are supporting the rest of us in the room and I'm very grateful to all of you very proud to know all of you now as the ending for all three services we're going to listen to the Alenu
go ahead and start off with our discussion and we're going to be talking about the covenant of circumcision or Brit Milah which occurs as you know and I'm looking down here at my notes <coughs> excuse me on the eighth day after birth for boys obviously in a very elaborate ritual and we're not going to go into detail here about who takes who to whom and who puts in whose lap but what I am going to start off with is that oh Adele I didn't know that you had hearing aids that's great um, glad you like the music uh, circumcision is actually uh, comprised of three procedures there's the cutting of the foreskin and the second part is the peeling back of the epithelium and the third part is called the mitzitza, which is the squeezing of blood or back in the day before bad things started to happen because the moles were sucking the blood from the penis and were passing on disease. Um, those are the three parts of the circumcision. And in about 140 CE, um, of these three procedures, in the beginning it was just the uh, circumcision of the foreskin. The peeling back of the epithelium, apparently it's um, said that it came along and it is in fact written about in the Talmud that uh, you needed to to have a full circumcision. You had to peel back the epithelium. Apparently this had a lot to do with the Hellenization that was going on with the Jews. And you know that the um, the uh, Greeks like to go through their Olympic Games naked and because if you were circumcised it was fairly obvious that you were a Jew and not a Greek that a lot of the uh, Jews tried to go through a very painful procedure to make themselves look like they had uh, foreskins which is next to impossible once the epithelium is pulled back. So in the beginning it was probably just a circumcision of the foreskin which is all that's required according to the Tanakh in Genesis and we'll go back to that in just a minute. But under here the uh, circumcision in the Tanakh is mentioned quite frequently. We have 99 year old Abraham and I'm, I was going to read and I'm going to put it down. It's in uh, Genesis 17 uh, about the covenant between God and Abraham and when he was 99 years old Abraham actually went ahead and circumcised himself and this mark on his body was the mark of the covenant he was also instructed to anyone who lived in his house all his slaves all of his children subsequently everybody from that point on was to be circumcised and then we also have mention of David's 100 foreskin dowry, which turned into 200. David wanted to marry Saul's, King Saul's daughter, Michal. And what King Saul said he wanted from David as a dowry was 100 foreskins from the Philistines, who you know were his enemy. And so uh, David did him one better, went out and killed 200 Philistines and brought him back 200 foreskins and therefore was permitted to marry Michal. I think that's very interesting. And I'm sure all of you know the story about Moses and Zipporah's son, where God was angry at Moses and was about ready to uh, do great damage to him. Please excuse my dog. There must be someone at the door. Um, Zipporah grabbed a knife and personally, she herself went ahead and circumcised her son and then God relented and let up and Zipporah at that point said bridegroom of blood to me in other words Zipporah knew what the issue was Moses had neglected to have his son circumcised or circumcise him himself then we have the story about Dina and the David was something else yeah I agree with that Saul was bad about many things and I concur with that uh, then we have Dean and the Shechemites. Uh, as you know, Jacob, um, the daughter of Lee and Jacob, was Dina. And when they had a stopover in uh, the area where the Shechemites were living, Dina was raped by the son of the person who was the king of the country at that time. His name was Hamor, and he was a Hivite. 
And because she was raped, uh, needless to say, uh, Jacob and all of his sons and the whole their whole tribe were very violently angry and didn't do anything about it right away. But the king came and s to uh, Jacob and said, my son, the one who raped Dina, wants to marry your daughter. So uh, a few days later, Jacob came back and said, okay, not only can you marry um, my daughter, but we can go ahead and exchange daughters among our two peoples. But all of your males have to be circumcised for this to happen. So the person who um, raped Dina went to all of the males and said, you have to get circumcised. And in fact, they did. And what happened was on the third day, while they were healing up from their circumcisions, Jacob and all his sons went out. They slew every male that was a lot that was there and had been circumcised, and they plundered the entire town. A little bit of a radical uh, conclusion there, but I thought that it was great. Now, the circumcision at Gigal, as you know, during the 40 years of uh, exile, the persons, the males who were out in the desert, who were born during those 40 years, were not circumcised. But before they could go um, and participate in Passover, before entering the Promised Land, uh, Joshua made sure that they were all circumcised. And those are uh, four of the main stories that you hear about in um, the Tanakh. Only two sons. Yes, the two sons were... Uh, subsequently joined Adele, if memory serves, from my readings. Um, the first two started and the rest joined in at a later time. But I will certainly check on that. Um, here we go with the views of the different movements on circumcision. Uh, the Orthodox and Conservative, as you know, that it's the father's responsibility to ensure that circumcision takes place. And I find it interesting that if you are born of a Jewish mother, you're a Jew, whether or not you're circumcised. Dina's two brothers only. Well, I will check on this. And um, I'm just telling you what I have been reading over the past few days. Thank you for letting us know that so that we can all go and look. Um, I appreciate it very much. So it is the father's responsibility to ensure that circumcision occurs. And it is a fallacy that you can't be bar mitzvah if you're not circumcised. And what some of the rabbis are saying is we just don't ask. Now, when it comes to conversion, that's a different story. The Orthodox and Conservative do still require. So this guy asked me if my circumcision hurt. I said, hurt. I couldn't walk for almost a year afterwards. Is this, tr is this a true story or are you reiterating something that is supposed to be like a joke? Is this true, Lanny? Okay. Interesting. And sad that you couldn't walk for almost a year, or whoever talking about couldn't walk for a year. Um, if you are looking to convert to Judaism and you're looking to be either Orthodox or conservative, it is required that you be circumcised. A joke, get it? Eight days. Oh my goodness. No, Lanny, as usual, and you did this to me once before. I keep trying to say I'm blonde but not stupid, and I think today I need to just withdraw that comment. <laughs> Thank you very much. I feel like an idiot. What else is new? Um, the reforms, uh, if you recall, uh, I think I talked about this once before, in the early 1800s in Europe, when the Jews were trying to assimilate into European society, they started to go really radically overboard against what at that time was referred to as orthodoxy. And there were a couple of their uh, big leaders who were definitely against circumcision. They called it barbaric, etc. And today, you are not required by the reform um, movement to be circumcised if you choose to convert and convert in a reform fashion. 
And what I found very interesting, however, despite the fact that it's not a requirement, uh, there were over 300 reform um, lay people and rabbis who were trained to perform circumcisions. Simeon and Levi only, the brothers came upon the carnage and then took the spoils. Um, thank you very much, and I will indeed look at that. And I thought that the rest of the um, sons and the rest of the family joined in subsequently. But I will look that up, and thank you. I'll write down that reference. Uh, with respect to the Reconstructionists, they, do all, they also do not require that um, you be circumcised if you want to convert. And neither does the Renewal Humanism and the other post-denominational um, well, I guess you can't really call post-denominational movement. That's the meaning of the word post-denominational. Now, with respect to health, as you can see when I go through this, some of this is the, um, the health benefits we'll start out with. Now, the evidence isn't really strong, just wanted to let you know, but there's purportedly as a, um, a decrease in urinary tract infections, a decrease in some sexually transmitted diseases in men. It does help protect against penile cancer, and it decreases the risk of cervical cancer in the female sex partners. And this is, by the way, if you get a circumcision, in case that wasn't obvious. Uh, it prevents against inflammation of the glands and the foreskin, and it prevents uh, phimosis, which is uh, the inability to retract, and paraphimosis, the ability, the ability to return it to uh, the foreskin to its uh, original position. It's also obviously easier to keep the uh, end of the penis clean. Now, what are the risks? Yeah, um, I'm going to be going over this later and Lanny thank you for thanking Adele which I have been doing throughout um, the risks pain bleeding and infection at the site and increased risk of inflammation at the opening of the penis and injury to the penis itself so uh, tradition is often cited as something that we should be looking at when we're looking at the pros We've always done it. Let's continue to do it. And what happens if we don't? And herein lies what the punishment is. Premature death at the hand of God, which is addressed in the Talmud. Spiritual punishment. Uh, there won't be a share in the world to come. And spiritual excision from their community of people and their kin. Now, they also, um, also address is acceptance and identity. Many... Jews believe that circumcision is critical to um, Jewish communal acceptance, and it's an integral part of a male's personal identity as a Jew. Even though many non-Jews have circumcision, and the, the meaning is completely different between those of, in the United States, as you know, and in many other countries, circumcisions are routinely performed. It has nothing to do with religious or being sacred. Um, I would think that with the respect to acceptance and identity, at least early on, a kid in school, for example, um, if they were playing a sport and they were all undressing together and they happened to be in a Hebrew school, um, that might be uh, a source of ridicule, if you will, if everyone was circumcised and you were the only one who was not. That may present um, an issue for some. So let's move on to what some of the cons are now that we've addressed some of the pros, if you will. The, uh, a lot of this information can be found if you look up uh, Brit Shalom, which is the Covenant of Peace by Brit Shalom Advocates. In other words, those who do not um, favor circumcision, if you will. We've already talked about uh, the law with respect to Abraham and also among the 613 mitzvot. We are commanded to not making any cutting in our own flesh, and that's in Deuteronomy 16. Now, you are also not 
uh, required to be circumcised if you have a health problem. For example, in the Bible it says if you've had two sons and they both died or something horrible happened to them, primarily probably because of hemophilia, then the third son does not need to and should not be circumcised. So instead what they do and what is sometimes done today is the Hatifat Nam Brit. And that is considered to be completely valid in uh, marking the covenant. So in other words, instead of doing a circumcision, if you can just do a little prick and take one drop of blood and that's considered a valid marking of the covenant, why not just go ahead and do that, if you will? And my prediction is that particularly with respect to the conservative religion, since they have been shifting with respect to homosexuality, uh, etc., that uh, within 20 years they'll probably uh, accept the Hadafat Dom Brit, if in fact even that within 20 years. Now, covenantal meaningness the case can be made that to enter into a covenant, you have to be consenting. You have to intellectually understand what the covenant means, and obviously a newborn can't do that. So one can question the meaningfulness of it. And with respect to tradition and identity, again, you can be excused for health. And where routine is not common, such as in Holland, they're left intact and they're still considered to be in good standing as a Jew. There are 60% of Jewish boys in Sweden who have not been circumcised. And when you consider the number of circumcisions that are done for non-religious reasons here in the United States and many other countries, Circumcision actually doesn't separate, for example, Christians from Jews. So the physical appearance has nothing to do. In other words, being circumcised isn't really um, a requirement for being Jewish. But again, as I mentioned before, the power of tradition is often invoked. But if you stop and think about it, how things change over time. Death used to be the penalty, for example, for cheating on your husband, for homosexuality, for blasphemy, or for insulting or disobeying your parents. And obviously that doesn't hold true anymore in our religion. And sanctioned by the Torah, but not permitted now, because we are educated and we are now enlightened. So we don't have slavery, animal sacrifice, Divorce for men only, and in most cases, females are not subservient to men. And with respect to circumcision itself, there have been some changes. As I mentioned earlier, in the second century of the Common Era, there was probably the peeling back of the epithelium, which is the more radical and what is actually done today. Um, has been was added on if you will as opposed to undone and the metzitza the sucking of the penis to remove the blood after the uh, STDs and TB etc that was transmitted by the rabbis or the moels or whoever was performing the circumcision that's pretty much now they just take a drop of blood if you will so what I'd like to ask you is, what kind of comments do you have? And Muslims are all circumcised after 13 years old. That's absolutely right, as are, as are many of the, the uh, Islamic and any other of the uh, faiths that are related. No crystal ball here would be interesting to see how it all develops. Um, many of the Abrahamic religions do circumcisions. And I didn't realize it was 13 years old, but I, I did know that, that Islam is one religion that does that. Does anybody have any acceptance for Jews are made for health reasons? That's right. And as I had mentioned, that is the one thing And way back in the day, which I found very interesting, is that hemophilia was recognized as a health problem way, 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 way back. And I remember reading and studying about that when I did the social justice presentation. So those of you who are gentlemen here, I would like you to chime in. And one thing that I would like to ask, let's say that you were not Jews and you were thinking of converting and considering the, the way we are presently, let's say that you wanted, you 
didn't quite know enough at the time of your conversion what movement you may want to belong to or what you were going to shift to. Would you choose to have um, circumcision so that you could get a conservator, uh, for example, let's not even talk about orthodoxy yet, um, just so that you would be able to participate in both or in not only the uh, conservative but also the others that didn't require it or would you be interested in starting off with not requiring it and then possibly at a later time if you decided you want to be conservative have a problem I was gone for a few minutes yeah Lanny you left us at the most critical point <clears throat> Does anybody have uh, any comments or any thinking about um, their views on circumcision? Whether you think that it should be in place, should it be a requirement for conversion, for example? And if I was a man, I would have it done, period. And that is because very much identify as conservative for the sake of your hypothetical this obstacle would probably would keep me from converting conservative thank you and that does not surprise me and I appreciate that comment Mike thank you very much no you guys are all saying easy for you to say laughing out loud okay law tradition health reasons all good for me mixed views and I think that's fabulous and as I say and convert through reform I choose to have the circumcision light as was already circumcised by a female Moa wow great not a fair question until actually faced with the choice and I sincerely agree with you and um, I think that's why I started off explaining why being a woman and I will not have to face that decision um, that I was bringing it up and that had to do with the Parsha and I thought it was an interesting topic and it gave me a chance to review the physiology of it as well as well as the halachic perspective and Lanny agrees I agree Lanny I can't see who's uh, doing that yes um, can you flash that up so that I can see who made that last comment please Kimberly There are rabbis who would accept converts with only the teapot dom, drop of blood, but not recognized by mainstream Judaism. Absolutely, and you would be surprised about who isn't recognized in mainstream Judaism. And I was also, uh, it is a covenant for all time, a commitment a convert should make willingly. I, I do want to tell you, and this is very interesting to me, thanks Lanny, and thanks everybody for your comments here is as you know I'm director of outreach for Darshan Yeshiva and I do the um, initial interviews if you will with the applicants for the conversion program and we at the moment require because we do conservative if you will so you would be accepted by conservative um, not orthodox and probably not in Israel because um, for many reasons as you know the rabbinate in Israel is rabid <laughs> um, to see what people have to say most of the um, men that I have come in contact with are already circumcised but I haven't yet had anybody say that they would not convert but since we only offer the conservative, in other words, our particular program, the way it is now, we require that um, you did my interview. Kimberly, oh my goodness. <laughs> I have to go back and look this up. Kimberly, I remember your first name. I do not remember your last name. And um, can I go ahead and ask you how long ago that was, Kimberly, if you don't mind? Women bear the pain of childbirth. I take circumcision. Wow. 
That's profound, Lanny. Thank you. I never, boy, that thought never entered my mind. But anyway, you know what I'm saying about Darshan Yeshiva, that I think that our program is absolutely marvelous, and I have yet to have anybody say that they would not be willing to um, convert with us specifically because of the requirement, because we do have the Bet Din, the Mekvah, and we do as a conservative conversion, we do require, um, if you haven't been circumcised, that the males be circumcised. It's actually Smith. Okay, that's better. Thank you. <laughs> Only a month or so ago. I hope I was nice. And you're in the program, right? Yeah, I didn't recognize the last name. I do recognize Kimberly Smith. Um, thank you, and thank you for letting us know. A lot of interesting comments tonight. And so, um, anything else that anybody has to uh, talk about or mention? I know that you've all um, pretty much on the same page, but some very compelling remarks, if you will. Just loved it. In case you're wondering why my head is turned, because I keep looking over here. If one is already circumcised, wouldn't the teapot be the only option available? Absolutely, and that's what we do. We do, in fact, have that as a requirement. And um, it is the uh, same um, requirement, if you will. If they're already circumcised, we do the, do that procedure. The Hadafat Dom Brit. And typically we ask um, that it might be easier to have those things done and done properly, mind you, with all the blessings, etc. Accepted procedure for all groups. I'm working my conversion program with Darshan Yeshiva. Yay, Kim. Well, Kim, I don't know how I can tell you how happy I am that you're working on the conversion through Darshan Yeshiva and that you're here with us at Bun Shul. That's very special to me particularly. Thank you. Anybody else have anything they'd like to say? I love the way all of you support one another and I'm thrilled that there are so many of you here tonight. And if I've ignored anybody, I hope you um, will forgive me. It's sad that it wouldn't be recognized in mainstream Judaism because of situations that would be out of their control. And I agree with you on that one. I'll go ahead and let David answer that, but I think he's referring to an earlier comment. One shul is my go-to shul forever. I hope I can manage to print this out so I can stick that up on my desk, Kim. Thank you. They were converting but were already circumcised. So I say the Hadafat Dombrit is accepted, was accepted if you have a health problem and can't um, have a circumcision. So a lot of the um, proponents of the Brit Shalom, which is a covenant of peace, if you will, kind of like a naming ceremony for a, a um, girl, that, um, that that would be sufficient. You know, if that's okay, why do you need to be circumcised? And then there are those who, like Lanny, feel very strongly, and actually most of the people that I've come in contact with feel fairly strongly that um, they want to have the circumcision performed if it hasn't been performed, just because to them that, that is the mark, the ultimate mark of their commitment. There is no bar when there is a drop of what, which is recognized by all. Thank you. Good. 
gonna raise my head to that one. Good comment. And now it's David's turn to ask, what do you mean? Looking forward to my mikvah. Kimberly, you probably have my number or whatever. Give me a call as you move along through your program or send me an email. I'd love to know how things are going. Make sure one is no one is filming it, Kim. I have um, very interesting. I've seen the uh, where the mikveh is done in Atlanta and it's actually quite beautiful and nobody can see it's a very very tall wall brick wall but it's open at the top you know like kind of those gymnasiums or a bathroom that has a door and you can't see it you can't see over the top of the door but you can hear um, where to make sure that your blessings can be heard And my email address is going to come up right at the end. And um, actually, I still have your records, Kim. So if you can't manage to, and you may not be able to not have a pen or pencil handy, write down my email address. I'll go ahead and contact you right after service tonight. The last statement, I apologize. I was misunderstanding the original statement from earlier. I thought it was saying that if you convert, and only the Tibadam, you would not be recognized by some or most. An Orthodox rabbi, I don't remember where, was found to be filming. Oh, my goodness. Can't believe it. Perverts are found among the clergy, all kinds of clergy. And I can agree with that. And actually, they're, well, I'm not going to say anything. And I do have that. I actually have your records as long as I'm, well, I think I've only had one Kimberly. So irrespective of my having um, not recognized the Thomas as your last name, I will get in touch with you. Usually the uh, people that I interview initially, as they go through the program, they only talk to me or only contact me subsequently. Of course, I presume they're probably pretty busy studying. If they have a problem or an issue or, you know, want to talk something over about Judaism and are embarrassed to talk to anybody else because they feel like a dummy and they know that that's how I feel every now and then. So they um, contact me. Smith is my married name. Okay. D.C. police say Rabbi Frundel used cameras set up in a changing area. Camera hidden in a clock. Wow. Okay. This has been a great evening, and as usual, I, you know, I try so hard. I'm so poor at, at timing these things, and I never know when to leave more or less time for a discussion. And to be perfectly honest with you, because it was Halloween, I didn't know if anybody was going to come. I didn't think circumcision was going to be a particularly interesting topic for anybody but me. Uh, because I specifically picked it because it had to do with the Parsha this week. So I'm going to go ahead and do my usual request for donations. Thank you. You're great lady doing great thing. Um, I would greatly appreciate it before I start begging here. I would greatly appreciate it if you would let me know. And um, let me just ask you before I beg for the donations here. Um, would you have had any problem if I had, um, when I interviewed with you, if I asked you at that time, instead of just offering, which I always do, if you need anything, you know, just let me know, but to actually be more aggressive and ask to contact me as you go along and let me know how you're doing because I really would like to know and there is no way I will know um, because of privacy issues and I have specifically requested that I not be given information subsequently um, like I would never give your name to anybody there are some people 
who do not want it known that they are converts or that they are in a conversion program and missed your promised email. Okay. Um, so here I am at the and went through to, is it considered as usual? I would say yes and Adele agrees. So as I said we operate solely on uh, the work of volunteers and money that comes from people like you who come. So anything that you can give, dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, anything that you can manage is something that we didn't have. So I would greatly appreciate it if you would keep us in mind. And here is my email address. And one thing that I would really, really like is if you would let me know what you like, what you don't like about the service, if you'd like anything added, anything taken away. Um, and most of all, instead of me having to dream up what other people might want to talk about, that you let me know what you would like to talk about. And I actually have not gotten any requests from anyone at any time for a subject that they would like to have discussed. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm coming to you by choice. That's great. This has been a thrilling evening for me. I can't thank you all enough for coming. You know how much all of you mean to me. And Kim, I'll make sure we get in touch. Adele, I'm glad I changed that um, Mi Hamoka, and hopefully that's acceptable to you. I really um, took your point well. And Kim, it's great to see you. Benjamin, David, thank you so much for coming. Lanny, you know I adore you. I'm really glad, and I guess this means you probably won't be here next week, right? don't like the lousy reception I am getting with music and pictures skipping. And I don't know what to tell you about that except that I have the um, most bandwidth that you can get in my physical location. I have the most powerful computer so I, I'm thinking that it might have something to do with Ustream or that it may have something to do with um, the servers that are running this that have nothing to do with my end. But it's very annoying. What's annoying for me is um, I rarely go back and look at these because I can't stand watching myself. But the lag time, uh, seeing my lips move, and it's the completely wrong thing that's being said. It's very annoying to me. So, again, I would like to thank you all for coming. And not only on a personal note, but I love, doesn't show us, will you be here? You know what? I wasn't going to be because I, if you're going to, if, yes, I'm going to say that I will be. The only week that I'm not going to be here is because of the closing of the house, which is supposed to be the week of the 10th. So I couldn't decide when or what I was going to do. I didn't want to put myself in a position of then having to cancel, which I think is absolutely atrocious. So I will say that, yes, next week is the week that I can be here. I just haven't put myself on the schedule yet. Shame on me since I'm in charge of the schedule that I should be putting myself on. So I will be here next Friday but not the subsequent Friday. And thank you for asking. And I hope you will come and I will be here. And I will put myself on the schedule tonight. So if any of you are planning on coming next week, I will be here and I would love to have you Send me an idea for what you would like to talk about because I could bore the socks off all of you um, without much effort, believe me. And if you leave it up to me, you never know. Kimberly, um, or Kim, I think that's what actually I called you, that I would like to um, tell you that I'm looking forward to seeing you next Friday too. Lanny, I hope you'll be here. Adele, please join me and the rest of us. And one thing I do want to tell you that I didn't quite finish in my last comment was I love the way all of you talk among yourselves. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Thank you. David, you're coming. That's great. 
Uh, oh, Adele, I'm going to write that down right now. It's your birthday. Is it actually on Friday? Wow. I have to think of some. <laughs> I'm going to think I'm going to think of something uh strange kind of off the wall. All of you mean so much to me. I wish I could hug you. More important, I wish not only I could hug you, but I wish I'm banging on the table here. I wish I could hear you. And I'm actually looking into something where, um, from my own end, to see if I can work it so that I can meld it with um, Darshan Yeshiva and with One Shul, the One Shul programming, so that. Um, Bottom of my camera, so finding this was amazing. And you coming here is amazing for us, and I'm sure we all agree, David. Thank you so much. Um, to see if there's some way that we can have some something so that we can all actually even see each other or hear each other in some way. Tuesday is your birthday. Is that this coming Tuesday? I mean, the, okay, so it's Tuesday, not Friday. The Tuesday before, got it. Okay, I've written that down. All of you are 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 wonderful, and again, I can't say enough. And I'd like to say now, Shabbat Shalom and Happy Halloween to all of you. And I will be here next week. And one of the first things I'm going to do after I go get a drink of water is to put myself on the schedule. Again, my deepest thanks to all of you. Uh, I would say I love all of you, but I guess that might sound a little trite. Hopefully you can tell by the way that I am with you, how much I care about all of you, and how grateful I am to you for coming. Thank you, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Shabbat Shalom.